Hello everyone. Happy Monday. Today is day 64 of Prayer Your 90 Day Prayer Challenge. Now, after the day I did our prayer for determination and I expressed my excitement about seeing Creed, I was like, oh my gosh, this is such a good movie. And then recently I tweeted how I really loved the movie um, Napoli Ever After. I'm like, oh, this is so good. And I even sh talked about it in my Instagram story. Like, why is anyone talking about this? And that was the next day, especially is when I was convicted about talking about Napoli Ever After. I'm like, wow. There was a lot of sex scenes. Well, not a lot, but two um, sex scenes in that movie. And I was like, I want to make sure that people do not think that I condone that. And the very next day I wanted to pray about, I wanted to pray. Today we're praying for marriage sex. And I've been wanting to pray for this since last week. But I waited until this week because other topics came to me strongly and and I was led to pray for those first instead. But today, just reflecting on all the movies we know and love, when I was a little girl, um, I wasn't even a teenager yet, but... I love the movie Grease. Me and my god sister would watch it all the time. And back then, we both were innocent. I was innocent. I did not take into account that the people, the the teenagers were insinuating and literally one of them got pregnant that they were having sex as teenagers. I didn't notice that. I didn't take that into account. I didn't see like, oh no, I just really enjoy the whole movie, the concept of um, the music and the girl gang, the boy gang, the racing, the good girl coming in, going to a sleepover, getting a makeover, getting accepted and, you know, just the controversy and the um, and everything like that. And then another one of my favorite movies was Titanic. My mother and I, when she was a single mom, we would watch it almost every Sunday after church. We would come home to our little apartment and God is so good. Um, back then, me, my mother and I were living in a one bedroom apartment and I, I loved it. I'm close up under my mom. I had no complaints. But after Sundays, um, after church, I would go on our black and gold couch and watch Titanic. And I have one clear memory of my mother making handmade hamburgers. She makes it so well. Excuse me, you guys. My daughter needed me. I'm back. So, um, yeah, so she would make handmade hamburgers. It's so good um, with the ground beef and cut up onions and um, mold it with her hands. And it was so good. And she would make homemade french fries, cut up a potato. And oh, my goodness. So, so good. So I love that movie when I was a teenager and I had um, friends, and I was really close to, especially my best friends. One of our favorite movies was Baby Boy. Now, I know <laughs> that movie is even more a little, um, um, there's violence. Is there violence in the movie? Yeah, it is. So, stuff like that. But all these movies have, oh, just a second, you guys. Okay, I'll get it for you, baby. So to um so all these different movies um loving basketball absolutely loved that movie in high school I loved it I loved it I tried out for the basketball team I had friends who were on the basketball team so that's the movie that we talked about a lot and in the movie um they are in high school. And they have sex. She loses her virginity to her next door neighbor. So um, 
all of these movies have premarital sex and this is the movies that we love and that we rave about titanic is i think it's one of still the top gross movie i think it's titanic and then avatars so that's how popular that's how much people loved that movie so it's very important why we're so used to it the media america the world it sells sex you guys, I am back. So a little side note, almost every day when I'm praying, there's probably been three times where it wasn't live. But every day when I'm praying, I am praying live on Facebook. So if when you listen to this, just know that ev if you follow Prairie or on Facebook, you will get a notification every time I'm live and you actually can even comment um, while I'm talking to you right now and we can have a, um, a live conversation. So I'm live right now. Um, one of my baby girls, my one year old is asleep and my two year old, she is having her afternoon snack. So she just needed me again. But um, we just love all these different movies. And because we're so used to sex, sex is everywhere. It has become a social norm to see sex and it's just not a conversation. I mean, I can remember as a girl, I'll probably turn my head on um, my mom, like side eye, I turn my head. So I knew it wasn't acceptable, but you know, as you get older, especially now, like once you're in college and stuff like that, um, and you just see it, like sometimes it's just glossed over and it doesn't become a part of the conversation. And I think as Christians, it's very important to make sure that we have that disclaimer, especially when we're around people who are not as mature as us or who may not be saved or just around young people. Young people need the constant reminder because there are so many temptations and everything is telling us to be sexy, um, get girls attention, um, be appealing to guys and um and as if beauty accentuates um, sex appeal. So we need a constant reminder. And that's why I wanted to make sure that while I was excited about seeing Napoli Ever After, that I wanted to make sure that I prayed for marriage sex. And that movie is so good. I encourage you all to watch it. Um, it touches on the identity that women have with their hair and with the uh what we identify as beauty and I mean it's relatable to some degree to everyone um some may take it exaggerated some may think it's spot on but it's definitely interesting and um one one of the first scenes is so funny but her mom is actually straightening her hair in the middle of the night so she can when it's time to wake up in the morning she just be laying there with flawless just unmessy just neat hair or whatever and then they just go right into it and then she's anticipating getting married and a lot of things um a lot of the time that these movies don't show is that after you have sex with someone not only does do you um, you're giving yourself away, but you're creating emotional tie to that person. And no matter what any young lady or woman tells you that there is an emotional tie and you're giving a piece of yourself away. And I truly believe that you're exchanging spirits. You're it's like influencing each other. Just like imagine if you feel like you're constantly hanging around someone and then you start saying they're slaying their lingo, talking like them, walking like them, making decisions like them. They say you are the people that you hang around with and sex is just such a strong intimate connection that it's totally the same way and I'm just so thankful that God really guided myself and my husband into where we are now because our story and especially my story could have went totally totally different and that conversation isn't necessary for today but um 
I am a testament that sex changes things. It changes your life. So we need to make sure that we are telling our youth, our young ladies, our grown ladies, everyone that marriage sex is the goal. Wait to have sex when you're married. And if if you've already had sex, it's okay. Ask God for forgiveness and dedicate your purity to God. Don't do it for yourself because yourself changes. Your emotions change. There's going to be days. There's going to be nights when you're going to be longing a companion, a friend, a boyfriend, a husband. There's going to be times where you're weak and emotional and maybe you're around males and you give in. So don't say you're doing it for yourself. Say that you're doing it for God and just recognize who God is in your life. God is always going to be there. He's never leave you or forsake you. He sees the best in you. He loves you unconditionally, no matter what you do. He wants what's best for you and he has great plans for you. God will continue to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all righteousness. And he has a place in heaven waiting for you. Continue to get to know God. And keep reading the Bible and get excited about him and your relationship. Um, My one of the things that secret it's not a secret, but maybe when we're 50 years old, um, not 50 years old, but 50 years married, people say, well, what's the secret of staying married so long? We've been married for eight years and literally Our love of God has kept us together. We disagree on many things. We're different. We're opposite. And we agree on many things too. But the main thing that always keeps us together and brings us back together when we are at odds or mad at each other or disappointed is that we love God. So God will help you stay committed to your own commitments too. So if you commit yourself to to purity, dedicate it to God, promise God, make promises to God and get to know him to where you will love and appreciate who he is to where you're saying, I'm going to keep this commitment. I'm going to wait for my husband. Um, sex is a big deal. It's not something It's not a recreation. It's not something I do to fulfill my needs. It is a desire that can only be fulfilled by my husband. Because when you pour that desire into the wrong person, then that's when you're in a toxic um, relationship and you are setting yourself up for failure. So no one can fulfill you like your husband, like a man, like a wife, someone who has committed their life to you and someone who is committed to love you unconditionally and being with you there no matter what, through the good days, through the bad days, to the pretty days, to the ugly days, the sick days, um, the broke days, the rich days, just someone who's going to be there through everything you when you're mentally high mentally low um just a husband and a wife is it's just such a beautiful thing and God made sex for marriage and that was so smart and on purpose because Sex is such a powerful thing and men and women have sex for different reasons so well the, I won't go into that, but ladies, especially just protect yourselves. You are precious. You are worth it. Um, I, one of my um, passions is to really uplift and talk to young ladies because I know the things that I went through and the decisions I've made. And when I look at any young girl Um, I just see myself and all I want to do is just tell her how beautiful you are, how precious you are, um, how great your value is and no one deserves you. Um, Any young lady close to me knows that I would tell them nobody deserves you. None of these guys don't give them no play, no time. You are better than them and you wait until somebody who is worth it and who earns a spot in your life. And while you are waiting, 
um, to be found. They say a man who finds a wife is a good thing. Make sure that you are feeling whole and complete by yourself. Make sure that you are mature in Christ. Make sure you know who you are. Um, make sure you learn your strengths and your weaknesses and just make sure that you are capable of, of handling conflict and you are capable of loving yourself and seeing yourself for who you are. Because if a guy comes along and tells you all these things about yourself, sometimes you can, that'll gas you up and get to your head and you'll just fall for it. But you have to say, oh, you don't have to tell me nothing. I know I'm great. I know I'm beautiful. I know I'm smart. I just want to know about you. And that's the thing that men and sometimes women too, they want to win you over. But it's not about winning someone over. It's about getting to know someone, who they are, their values, and loving people for just who they are. Because you definitely don't want to get into a relationship um, coming in with false expectations, acting like who you think the other person wants you to act. And you don't want to come into a relationship where you are saying that you want this person to change certain things about themselves. That's not what it's about. It's really about loving someone for who they are and being complete as an individual. So both of you guys will come into the relationship 100%. I'm 100% whole. You are 100% whole. So when there are days where we are feeling depleted or defeated, even because we're at 100%, when we're at 50% and because we are one, we are still 100 I don't know if that makes sense. So I am 100% whole. Um, I know who I am. I know God. I know where I'm going in life and what I want to be. And I am everything that I would want to be with. So I am full. I am whole. And the guy should be the same way. So when y'all are married and there are days when you will feel weak, you will feel sad, um, you won't feel at your best. So let's say then you're at 50%. So when you are at your 50%, you still have your whole husband over here who can complete you and help you to feel better. And it's the same thing, vice versa. And I was actually listening to um, the radio and on the commercial, um, it said, how did you guys stay together after all these years? And they said, because neither one of them ever wanted to leave at the same time. So there was always whenever there were having differences, there was only one person who said that, um, you know, I don't want this anymore. So it was never both of them at the same time. And that's kind of an example of why you want to be whole and that you don't come into a relationship looking to be completed because you cannot find satisfaction in your man and in your woman. You need to find satisfaction and wholeness in God because God is consistent and man is not. And once you get an understanding that, especially when you're married, that I'm here to help others and I'm here to love others and I'm here to serve people, you won't be in a marriage relationship or a friendship looking at what can you do for me. You will be in a relationship saying, what can I do for you? I know this is where you fall short and I'm not going to be mad about it. I'm not going to feel... um at lost about it, I'm going to help you through it. And if you have this mindset in all your relationships, and when you see someone fall short, so and you you are constantly helping each other, you both are helping each other just go higher and higher and higher into your destiny instead of when you when that person is in their weakness, you're complaining about it, you're getting on them about it, and you're rejecting them about it. All you're doing is if you're not causing, well, not causing, but if you're not an accessory to it, 
then you're knocking them down even lower. And you never want that. You never want to have a setback and go backwards. You want to continue to go forward because all of us need to live to our maximum potential. We no longer need to have potential, but we need to live out our our dreams and our visions. Write it down, make it plain, and then make it happen. So I'm just so excited that I am able to tell you guys to have marriage sex, don't have casual sex, don't have friend sex, don't have um, my boo sex, my boyfriend sex, my girlfriend sex. Don't do it. It's not healthy um, emotionally. It's not healthy mentally. There's no stability in that. You don't know how you guys are going to feel one week from now, one year from now a decade from now and hopefully you don't be in it that long but you want to give your body to someone who is committed to you for a lifetime and you want to save yourself and avoid the the cycle that comes with it from constantly looking for for someone to um fulfill you and to where it goes from one to 10 people to 20 people and then you just become real vain and then all sins lead to other sins especially when you decide to be with someone to have sex with someone let's say that they do drugs and because you have that strong connection to them and you have that openness to them you'll be open and willing to try drugs um there's so many different issues um pornography because um you're looking to um, have sex with all these different people. You pervert what sex is and to where by the time you get married, you have this really jacked up um, expectation of sex. And I'm not saying as far as the, I'm not trying to talk about the, the, I'm trying to talk about the desire of sex because I'm not going to downplay sex. Sex is a beautiful thing and it's a great thing between husband and wife. But once you start taking it to pornography, then you really start looking at men and women as objects because there's nothing about a relationship when you're watching pornography. It's nothing about interaction. I mean, it's just like... The camera just zooms in and just shows you this and that. And it makes it so minimal when it's such a huge dynamic. So um, I'm going to read these scriptures that I found. And I encourage you to go back and read them and find more scriptures about... um, just about relationships read the song songs of solomon it's really good i'm not reading that today but in the songs of solomon um he's just expressing his love for his bride and he's just so in love with her and just uses all these beautiful words and comparisons and even one scripture it talks about um her not giving her desires to anyone and I may be mistaken so don't quote me on it um I'll definitely when we get off when we get off live I'll go and look for it and then I will copy and paste the com- that scripture in the comments here on Facebook and for those who listen to this on the podcast come to Prairie or Facebook page and look for day 64 marriage sex and you will see the scripture copied and pasted in the comments and I'll even go to the description of this podcast and I'll make sure that I copy and paste it there so I'll have it in the description for this episode as well so let's read first Corinthians chapter 6 Verse 18 through 20, New Living Translation. It says, and this is with an exclamation mark. It says, run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. 
for sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. Next, we're going to read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 through 5. It says, God's will is for you to be holy, so stay away from all sexual sin. Then each of you will control his body and live in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion like the pagans who do not know God and his ways. And that is 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 5. So we know that they're talking directly to us Christians in that verse because it says not as the pagans do. So that tells us that God knows that Christians are going. He knows we're going to be tempted and we're going to have temptation. So it's important for us as believers, as Christians, as followers of Christ, lovers of Christ, that we continue to remind each other. So this is a reminder for those of us who are not married, those of us who are engaged, and those of us who are single, who are teenagers, who are in middle school. I pray that this prayer topic and this prayer reaches all ages and everyone who needs to hear it in the name of Jesus. So let's pray. God, thank you for this wonderful, beautiful day. Thank you for Monday for a fresh start of our work week. Father, I pray that everything that we set out to do this week, that we write it down and that we execute it, Father. And I pray that everything that we have to do this week, that we say what we have to do and we pray on it and we give it to you and say, God, we will be successful completing these tasks in the name of Jesus as we close out the year, Father. Let us all stay motivated and strong. Let us not be discouraged, Father. Father, it is the colder months of the year and This is the season where people are looking to be booed up and to be comforted and to stay warm, Father. But I pray that we stay clear from temptation and that we do not put ourselves in a predicament that leads to sex, Father. I pray that those of us who have made commitments to purity, that we promise you, God, because you are our everlasting Father. You are a great Father, and we are so thankful to have you such a sovereign loving God father thank you for being there for us and always being available especially when no people are around and other people aren't available let us continue to exercise our right and our privilege of prayer especially here in America where we don't have to worry about being persecuted for prayer and we can do it anywhere and everywhere father father i pray that mothers and fathers continue to teach their children about sex i pray for brothers and sisters older brothers and sisters that they are open with their siblings and who have had experience that they share with them the truth about sex and help them to not make the same mistakes father i pray that women who have gone through any type of bad relationship and bad experience i pray that you restore them father and that they find wholeness in you father and let them know their worth that they are still beautiful they are still wonderful they are still princesses they are still queens and there is a king who wants them and who's going to love them just as you father they are going to have a husband who loves them as christ loves the church father thank you for all the blessings that have come out of our mistakes father and we know nothing is by mistake but it is a part of your goodwill and your plan and purpose for our life father so we're going to continue to give you all the glory through every triumph through every disappointed we're going to thank you god because we know it is in your hands father and we trust in you god god i pray for all the men out there who have desires and who are pursuing women father i pray that 
they realize that they can either make or break a woman and they have a strong effect on a woman. So let them take a responsibility to be pure and to. And I pray that men will not give into peer pressure and won't feel like they have to do anything to prove themselves to this world and to their peers. But they find the value in women and that they will have the desire to find a wife and to love her father as Christ loves the church father. I pray for women who feel lonely right now, father, and I pray that they will feel beautiful and they will feel loved and that they don't need that affirmation from any man, father, but they will feel beautiful in their father's eyes, father. And I pray for women who are in friendships with other women that they will continue to encourage and build each other up and help each other stay strong, Father. So thank you for the gift of sex. Thank you for marriage, Father. And I pray that those who are married, Father, I pray that you will bless their sex life and let them continue to flourish and let them continue. If they want kids, bless their wombs, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. We love you, we praise you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys, um, my daughter needed me again, so the prayer is a, a little um, cut off. But I pray that you prayed this prayer with me, and I pray that it blessed you, and you have a wonderful Monday, and you are encouraged to have a great week. Bye.